Okay, in this video I'm going to be talking about Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law is the electrostatic force. It gives us the value of the electrostatic force between two charged objects. So the formula is a lot like the gravitational formula where we have a constant that helps to make the units work times the charge of one of the objects times the charge of the other object and that sort of makes sense that our force would be proportional to how much electrostatic charge we have. And then divided by r squared, again, we can imagine that if this one little charge is generating a force, then the further away you are, if that force is being generated in all directions, the less of that force you're going to experience. How much less? Well, if we imagine it's spreading out on the surface area of a sphere, then this little spot where you are occupies a smaller and smaller space on that surface area of the sphere. So as the surface area grows, the force is proportional to how much of that surface area you see, and since surface area is proportional to, uh, is uh, related to r squared, then we can say that it ends up being 1 over r squared. So that's what causes the 1 on r squared relationship. And the direction for this is going to be a little more complicated and it's based on the law of electrostatics. So we're not actually going to give it a definite direction. What we're going to remember is based on that law, like charges repel and unlike charges attract. Now with that idea in mind, if we can recognize that if we put like charges into this equation, like a minus and a minus, or a plus and a plus, the overall equation will result as a positive, because we either go minus minus, which turns into a plus, or plus plus, which is a plus. And so if we want to say a direction, since that's repelling, we would say that was in the direction of radially outward, or if we imagine this as the radius, then we would say that that force is repelling in the r direction, and we put the hat on it to remind us that this is a unit vector which specifies direction but no magnitude, but no size. So though that's Coulomb's law and the k in this case, Coulomb's constant, happens to work out to be 9 times 10 to the 9 for uh, metric units and that's in newtons. Uh, meters squared divided by coulomb squared so that way we get rid of the radius and we get rid of that so if we're in metric that's what we use and obviously there'd be some different number or some different constant here used if we were working in the imperial system so with that in mind what we want to do now is I want to compare oh, I'm just going to do a little erasing here for something that I did previously we want to compare the electrostatic force in between a, or to the gravitational force for a proton and an electron. And the point of this calculation is going to show that the electrostatic force is much greater than the gravitational force. And as a result, when we're dealing with electrostatic uh, items uh, on an atomic level, like electrons and protons, we're going to consider their electrostatic interaction, but we're going to ignore their gravitational interaction because it's much smaller. So determine the electrostatic force between an electron and a proton if they're separated by a distance of 1 times 10 to the negative 10. So looking on a chart, any chart, I can find out that the charge on an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. We'll discuss later how they came up with that value. And the charge on a proton is the same thing, but it's positive. So negative for the electron, positive for the proton, and I said let's have a separation distance here, r of 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. So the force, the electric force that's going to act on that proton or that electron is kqq over r squared, which is 9 times 10 to the 9 newton meter squared per coulomb squared times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. I should make one of those charges negative to reflect the electron. 
divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters, and I need to remember to square that number. 9 exponent 9 times 1.6 exponent negative 19, negative 19, and I get 2.3 times 10 to the negative 8. That number might seem kind of small, but you have to remember we're talking about protons and electrons which have ex extremely small masses. So that's a very large force in comparison to the mass that they have. Let's do the same calculation for their mass. Mass of an electron. Oh, I gotta look that one up. You can't see it, but I have my handy resource book here. I don't know the mass of an electron off the top of my head here, so I'm just gonna look that up in my book here. Mass of an electron, 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31. Mass of a proton is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And again, I'm going to assume that they are separated by a radial distance of 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. So my gravitational force, I'm just going to do it over here so that I don't run into all the stuff that I did earlier, is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of one times the mass of the other divided by the radius squared. We can see how similar those equations are. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, though is very different from a constant standpoint. Newtons uh, meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of an electron and the mass of a proton divided by their separation distance squared. And this is all big calculator work, but 6.67 exponent negative 11, negative 31 times 1.66 exponent negative 27 divided by 1 exponent negative 10 squared. And I got 1 times 10 to the negative 47 newtons. So again, 1 times 10 to the negative 47 newtons. So clearly, this force, the electric force, is way bigger than the gravitational force if I'm dealing with elementary particles like atoms or electrons or stuff like that. So what that means is effectively, I don't care how big that is. It's so small that I don't care about it. And so all of the behavior of these protons and electrons we expect to be dominated or predicted by this electric force. So once again, this is the equation that tells us how Two, or the magnitude of a force between two charged objects, depending on how far they are separated. If we use that with the proton and electron and compare it to the gravitational force, what we see is that the gravitational force is so much smaller than the electric force that we don't really care that it exists. And so we, what we get out of that is that if we're looking at the behavior of atoms or electrons or anything like that, we can see that they're going to be completely dominated by their electrostatic forces and not their gravitational forces.